This video is proudly sponsored by Brio Smokeless Fire Pits. Mm, what is going on YouTube fam? Welcome to a saltwater edition of a high adventure video. History being made today y'all. We are for the first time taking the SS High Adventure, our John boat out on the salt water here in South Carolina. Pretty psyched, I'm not gonna lie. Check this out. We have our crab pots ready to go. We got two of them. We got all of our gear, all kinds of good stuff that I'm getting ready to throw down. I wanted to get down here while the tide was falling, but it was just unavoidable. I spent a lot of time yesterday. In fact, maybe a lot of you saw last night, I was live streaming, getting my bait for my crab pots today. I was out way too late basically. And so we're just kind of getting a late start on the adventure today. No matter, at the very least, we're gonna get our crab pots out in the water and let them soak overnight, see what happens. So I do know the water looks pretty dingy, looks pretty muddy, but uh, I'm hoping that's not gonna affect the crab hunting. If I were fishing a lot, which I'm hoping to do over the course of the next couple of days, at least a little bit, um, I'd be a little worried. But hopefully for the crabbing, it's not gonna make that big of a difference. There we go. Let's get this high adventure underway. If we can start the motor. There she goes, roaring to life. Oh, we're gonna keep a close eye on our depth finder, make sure we're staying in the channels. This is all brand new to me, y'all. Absolutely, I mean, 100% new. So if anything I'm confident in, I've got the right type of boat for these kind of waters, these inlets, these back bays. So we're just gonna take it nice and easy. Man, this is awesome. I love this kind of stuff. We have arrived at our first destination. Sitting in about six and a half feet of water. Looks pretty peachy to me. So what we have here is just your typical crab pot. But what we do, or what they do around here, is they put the rebar on the bottom because these currents can get so ripping that if you don't have the rebar to hold it down on the bottom, your trap will just like start tumbling around. So got the rebar clipped on the bottom there which is pretty fancy so what we're gonna do i'm gonna turn it over open the latch their little bait holder here and what this does as you guys can kind of see is uh this keeps the bait in the middle and keeps the crabs really from like instead of just like throwing the bait in the box and like sitting on the bottom then the crabs can like scuttle under the trap and just like pick on the bait without having to actually make their way in it this way the bait sits right in the middle and they're gonna actually have to go inside to get it. So it's suspended in the middle of the trap. So they're gonna have to figure out how to get to it, which crabs are pretty crafty. So they're usually pretty good at doing that. And what we have for bait is a bait I've never used, but it's fresh. I wanna try it today. I have some fresh striper carcasses. A lot of people use chicken. A lot of people use like turkey neck. And I just thought, you know what? Why not use a fresh fish carcass? I mean, look at that. I've kept it nice and cold. I filleted these this morning. In fact, you know what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do this over the boat somewhat if I can. And uh, that, I mean, that's just all fresh, fresh striper right there. Like I said, it hasn't been sitting out, hasn't gotten rotten or anything like that. We're just gonna try to, ooh, there you go. I mean, literally just cram it in there. There we go. That's not bad. Let's see, you got, got any more pieces in there? Got some rib pieces there, some meat. Any more, any more? There's another little chunk right there. Just fit it all in, stuff it in, if you will. We're just gonna close that up. Boom, there we go. Got some fresh striper. Let's see what we can do with this. I'm excited to give this a try. I think this could be really good. I don't know, we'll find out. All right, and that's it. We got the side latch closed up. Just gonna drop her straight down like that. And she hits the bottom right there. 
Got plenty of line. Out goes the buoy. First trap set, first pot set, I should say. That is sweet. I'm, ex I'm really excited for that. The current is ripping in, starting to carry everything in. So hopefully we got a little fork right here. In fact, I see somebody's pot uh, over, over on that side, but there's a little fork right here. This is kind of the main area, but we got this nice little point. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll draw some crabs in. I'm not, I see a pot there, but I didn't really see any other pots on my way in. So fingers crossed, we kind of got run of the mill here. So I'm about a quarter of a mile away from where I set the last pot. Um, I just saw this little inlet and it looked good. I've never been here before y'all. So this is just totally brand new to me. So we're just spreading the pots out, see if we find a good place. And uh, just kind of shooting in the dark, really, is what we're doing. All right, so here's somebody's pot right here. So hopefully that's a good sign. Little inlets like this, see this right here? This is a good, good spot to throw a cast at. Once we get the second pot set, we might throw a cast at around a little bit, see if we can't find some shrimp. Now this looks interesting right up here. It kind of forks off. That's the main channel. See a lot of shells, shell beds. That oh, looks very interesting. Now, if this dead ends, we're going to put it right out here. Stay off the main channel. Courtesy for the boats. All right, had to turn us around because it actually looks like it, I mean, it snakes back up there, but it gets pretty narrow. So that's going to kind of dead end. So I don't have to worry about like this being a main through fare for the boats. This is where the boat's going to go. So what we're going to do is, I see a ton of oyster beds right here, actually along both sides. And uh, so we're going to just drop our pot right here. And so we'll be able to kind of work both sides a little bit. What's our depth? Yeah, five and a half feet. That's perfect. That's perfect. Let's get a pot right out here. Y'all, I'm so excited to tell you about today's sponsor, the Brio Smokeless Fire Pit made right here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. The good old US of A voted best smokeless fire pit by Popular Mechanics 2022 Yard and Garden Awards. Y'all, this thing is amazing. The X Airflow raised air vent design on the bottom of the fire pit enables oxygen to feed the fire even after significant ash buildup. And the versatility of this product is off the charts. Multiple ways for you to be able to set up your smokeless fire pit to be able to cook your favorite recipes over an open fire. For me, it was the sear plate that you can place directly over the fire pit that really caught my eye. Being able to cook up multiple different foods at the same time is really convenient. And you're not getting that ash and soot all over in your recipes, which is really nice. And everything gets that nice fire roasted flavor. I mean, let's be honest, everything tastes better over an open fire. And when you order a sear plate with your Brio fire pit, it actually comes oiled with a protective covering over it, so it is ready to be used directly out of the box. Ladies and gentlemen, a phenomenal fire pit to bring with you on camping trips or to set up and use in the backyard. Click on the link in the description below to get your hands on a Brio smokeless fire pit and start enjoying more fire roasted foods today. I'm going to close that up. That'd be counterintuitive. Have the gate open. <laughs> it's like, hey, climb on in, climb on out. The crabs would appreciate that. Look at that. Oh, man, that just looks good. It's all oily and bloody and fresh. Woo! Let's do that over the boat. If that don't get the crabs to crawling over, I don't know what will. Close it up. We're ready to go. Sweet. I like the look of that. I really do. Drop them down right there. He's at the bottom right there. Then I've got a, a plenty of line. So when that tide comes up, I can, uh, that buoy will still be above the tide. That's what you want. That's at about three and a half feet right there. By the time the tide comes up, it'll be at about five and a half feet. That's all you need, really. So, boom. Guys, we've got two pots set. I am so jacked right now. I am really excited. I love this kind of stuff. I love throwing pots down. In fact, actually, I've applied for my commercial uh, crabbing license because in South Carolina, you can only do two pots per person. But if you have a commercial crabbing license, you could do like up to 50. I don't want 50, but I'd like to be able to put like five or six out. <laughs> 
So, but we've got our two out for now. I think we're gonna get the cast net out. Let's get the cast net out. Just throw it around a little bit for fun. Uh, let's see if my practice has paid off. All right, well, that wasn't a terrible first throw. Could have been better. Need to get a little more swing to it. Y'all, what happens is, is when this tide comes up, see all of these grasses like in the water now? All the little bait and the shrimp and stuff flee up into the grasses to get away from you know, like the redfish and the, the trout, the speckled trout. Um, but when the water's down, they got nowhere to hide. Oh, we got something. Hold up, hold up. We got something in there. Oh, we got a mullet. Oh, wait, no, we didn't get a mullet. We got, what is that? Uh, I forgot what they call these. It's some sort of little bait fish. There you go. I don't know. I forgot what that's called. Anyway, don't need them right now. We got something else over here. What is this little guy? It's a little minnow, I guess. A little glass minnow. Might be a baby mullet. I don't know for all I know. <laughs> you hop back in. Hey, the first fruits on a solid throw too, I might add. Cool. Whoa, 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 whoa. That tide's really starting to crank in now. Got the pot set. That tide's really starting to get high. A lot of grass is in the water. It's gonna be real hard to get any bait or shrimp now. We're getting close to supper time. I think we're gonna go ahead and go get our camp set up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we're gonna be for the next few days. Went and got some supper since we didn't catch any supper. Bobby suggested to this to me. It's like the prime rib sandwich. Oh, look at that thing right there. Au jus, juice. That looks like it's gonna be delightful. Mmm. Mmm. Homemade chips. That's awesome. Close that up for now. This is where we're staying. I have a good friend, Bobby, over at Jig Head Outdoors. Um, they've got a place down here and so he said I'm more than welcome to come stay for a little bit family wasn't using it So these are the digs for the next few days. I actually did not realize that I was going to be staying um, Under the house. So I actually brought my tent and everything to set up in the bed of the truck But I think since we're gonna be out of the rain cuz we're under here I think we might just sleep in the bed of the truck. Just go ahead and set up an air mattress back there We'll be rocking and rolling. Got the boat all plugged in, getting it ready for tomorrow. Man, I'm really excited. I really hope our traps have something in them. I wanna see what this little outbuilding is here. What's this? Oh, <laughs> check this out, guys. Look at this, look at this. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, here it is. We got outdoor shower. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, look, they've already got soap here. Man. Hmm. I wonder if Bobby would mind if I use their soap. <laughs> I'll leave a warning. Be like, I did use this. This is sweet though. I mean, we got everything we want. We got a shower. We've got uh, water hookups right here. Got a hose and we've got electrical. I mean, this is better than any, uh, better than any campsite. That's for sure. Especially since we have, you know, this overhead garage to keep us out of the, out of the elements. <laughs> Beautiful shower. I think he said the hot water works, but I have to go inside to turn it on. Whew. I don't really want to do that. That feels fine. It's so hot and humid down here. I don't mind if it's cool. Oh, that feels good. All right, time for some supper. Well, here are the digs for the night. This is kind of comfy, actually, I'm not gonna lie. I think I actually prefer not having the tent because it would be a lot hotter because the tent would keep all the heat in and it's plenty hot. Mm. That's amazing. Mm. 
well, y'all, kind of an uneventful first half day, but that's the price you pay when you miss the low tide. The tide waits for no man. We're gonna get some sleep, wake up. Hope there's some crabs in the trap tomorrow. I'll catch you guys in the morning. Ah, good morning, YouTube fam. Here you go, little Debbie. Breakfast of champions. Wash it down with a salted caramel energy drink. Oh yeah. Nope. Mmm. Nothing like that. Oily chocolate sticking to the roof of your mouth first thing in the morning. Alright, let's go check some crab traps. I just spotted something up here in the main channel. I think it's an old crab pot. It looks like really, really run down. And this is right like in the channel. Most most people set their crab pots off to the side, but I mean, this is like right smack down in the middle. Yeah, this is old. This is all like crusted over. I wanna see. You're not supposed to mess with other people's pots, but in this instance, like I almost ran over it. I think let's, I wanna see if, if like you can grab, well, I totally missed it, totally whiffed. But you can see, like, see how, like that's been underwater a long time. Somebody's lost this pot. There are a lot of commercial pots around here. In fact, this actually looks like a commercial pot with like the hoop on the top. But it looks like a lost commercial pot. Look at this. I wanna just see if you can grab it, if it'll come up at all. Look at that. Cut the motor here. I know, I don't know about South Carolina. I remember like in Oregon, there was a rule like, like abandoned pots or whatever were open for anybody. This obviously just looks like it's probably been lost for a long time. I mean, to have this kind, this amount of growth on this, uh, on this deal is, uh, it's been in the water longer than maybe since last year. I wanna see if it'll come up or not. My main thing is I wanna make sure nobody else runs over it being out here in the main channel. See if there's anything on the end here. Oh, look at that. Old trap. I think I see a, a crab in there though. I think I see a few crabs in there actually. Look like, like a stone crab or something. Obviously, I don't practice pulling up other people's pots, but uh, but when they're in the main channel, like I said, and they're obviously been abandoned, maybe we can uh, find some identification on this. Oh, uh, like somebody zip tied this shut, which is a practice that guys do in order for um, people not to steal stuff out of the traps. Let's get this zip tie off. There we go. We got like some stone crabs or something in here. Check these guys out. I'm gonna grab this fish. Look at this fish. Look at that. Like a little guppy or whatever. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Look at the mouth on that thing. Who knows how long he's been stuck in there. There you go. There's another one in here. Look at that. Ouch. Man, they've got a mean bite. That's kind of cool. Boy, he bites down hard. There you go, buddy. Go free. Let's see what the heck this crab is here. There we go. That's what we got. Look at this. Look at this guy. It's a male. Uh, for, are these mud crabs? I forgot what they're called. I'm gonna have to look up the regulations. I think this is a mud cr crab. Look at the claws on that thing though. That's where that meat is. Hey, little fella. Come on. Are you gonna be stubborn for a second, are you? He's just hanging on to the trap in there. He doesn't want to come out. He's like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Who knows how long he's been in here? Like, who knows how long both these guys have been in here? This trap, I mean, this trap looks old. This looks like it could have been from last year. There we go, there's, got one off. This one's a female right here. Oh, 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 she's about to get me too. There we go. Now these are, I just looked up, these are called stone crabs. And I gotta look up what you can and can't keep. I got one male and one female here. But that's pretty cool right there. There's the female. Big old claws, look at those things. All right, y'all, I just looked up the regulations for these stone crabs. 
Um, you're not allowed to keep the crab. You can keep a claw though if they have two claws. Both of these have two claws. You can even keep a claw from the female as long as she doesn't have an egg mass. Obviously no egg mass there. The claws though have to be two and three quarter inches. So I've got actually a measuring tape there. Oh yeah. That claw's like that claw's like three and a half, almost four inches long. So it's gotta be like two or three quarter inches from the elbow to the tip right there. And I don't know if you guys could see that, but that's plenty long. That's over three inches long. I have never done this before, but I watched a guy do it and he just did it like this. And there you go. Took the claw off, tossed the crab back, just like that. And then you get the claw because they'll grow their claws back. Now, where did the other one go? Oh, she had it double check the length on this one that's gonna definitely be the same thing yeah that's that's over three inches easily so you I'm assuming you just find the biggest size there we go removed a claw boom Crab goes back free, saved him from the trap, and we got two nice pieces of claw out of that. That was awesome. There we go. Well, we haven't even gotten to our own crab traps yet, and we've already got some crab meat. There's another one of these weird little fishies. Go back in there. Ladies and gentlemen, High Adventure Videos just saved a bunch, just, just saved like five lives today. That's just what we did. And that's just what we do here. I'm just double checking the trap, making sure nobody else is hiding out. No, nope, I think we're good. Well, Y'all, I was just chatting with my buddy Bobby and he said, apparently in Florida, you're not allowed to take abandoned crab pots. I just looked up online for South Carolina, what the rules were. And there were really no rules. Like the only thing I could find was um, if you have a trap set in like a channel, uh, DNR, Department of Natural Resources here in South Carolina, uh, they'll take it. Like they'll, they'll remove it. There was something about like reporting any missing crab pots or something like that, but there was nothing about like, it's unlawful to, you know, take an abandoned crab pot. At this juncture, like where it's obviously out in the main channel, and it's obviously abandoned. Like it's been lost would be my guess. There are certain rules, like as a crab fisherman, you have to like keep up with like, you can't leave a pot for longer than like five days or something like that. Obviously that's been down there a little longer than that. Uh, you have to keep like your equipment clean and stuff. I barely saw the buoy. Like it's so nasty and brown. Like all these other pots, you know, the buoys are clean, neat, so you can see them when you're going along the surface. Um, like I said, we about ran over that. In fact, another, if the water probably up another foot or two, we probably would have just mowed right over that. Probably got caught up in the prop. I guess we're gambling a little bit. I mean, maybe somebody could tell me in the comment section below. I don't know what we're, if what we're doing is illegal, but I feel like it's better to get this out of the water and at least take it back to shore than just leave it out here in the channel. So that's just what we're gonna do. We're gonna roll with it at this point. I might have DNR knocking on my door like in a couple weeks after I release this video. I don't know, I'll let you guys know. All right, there's our first pot. Drop this down. Oh, almost lost a croc. That would have been no bueno. Oh man, I'm nervous. I'm nervous because like, if I don't have anything, I'm gonna be really bummed. I'm also excited because of the possibilities. It's been soaking for about 18 hours or so would be my guess. What in the world? I have, oh, I have a bunch of little like flies on the top. Get off of there. Moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. Moment of truth. <sighs> Come on, be good to me. Oh yeah, we got crabs. We got four of them in there. All right. Woohoo! All right, they gotta be five inches across, but look at that. We've got some. Sweet! <laughs> That's legit. There you go. We got blue crabs. They don't get very big compared to like the Dungeness crab and they only need to be 
five inches across from spike to spike. But we've got some crabs. First hole is a go. Come over this way. We'll see if they're all, uh, there's gotta be at least a couple keepers. Five inches ain't very big. Doesn't matter if they're male or female. Yeah, just head on out. <laughs> all right. Oh, he almost got me. No, let go, let go. Let go. I got my measuring thing on the side of the boat here. Got two of them fell down this way. Almost guarantee that's a keeper right there. This might be the biggest one. Oh yeah. That is five and a half right there. So keeper number one. That one's a keeper. Ooh, that guy almost got me. One, oh yeah, here he is. No, these guys are savage. Look at that. Look at that. Come here, you. Look at how he's like snapping at me. Boy, these are blue. He almost got me. There we go. All right, let's see if this guy's a keeper as well. One keeper so far. This one. Oh, yeah, another keeper. Almost six right there. That's the biggest one. There you go, two keepers at least. I got a stick of suspicion those other ones will probably be keepers as well. This is my bait cooler. You guys just drop in there for now. All right, where are the other two? That one's five as well, just at five. That's three, three out of four. This guy might be a little small. Grab those two black flippers just like that. Put them up against this. Let's see, that guy's five as well. Whoa, we have four for four. They gotta be five inches from this tip to this tip right here. All right, fought four for four on the first trap. Sweet. And then check this out. We just dropped the pump in. Oops. And then we just get some fresh salt water for them. You guys go. Oh, look, look at look at this. Look. Look at this, they are, look, they are not, these guys are way more aggressive than the Dungeness crabs, I feel like. Like, they they know what's up. I'll show you the colors on them later, you guys can see, but. We're just gonna pack this pot off with us and uh, move it to another spot and drop it down for the day and see if we get anything else, but uh, sweet. Good way to start, good way to start. Let me get, to, let me get that striper out. There you go, somebody be happy for that. We'll get some fresh bait in there at the next location. Here we go, coming up on trap number two. Woo. Between the breeze and the outgoing tide, it's just bussing around here. It is just whipping. Hitting all kinds of waves and stuff heading in. Here we go. Moment of truth. Be good to me. Be good to me. And hey, we got three in there. We got three. We got three. And I think we got, I'll bet all those are keepers. Maybe that just means we need to keep our traps up in the little creeks. I don't know. Could just be random. But we got three in there. Let's dump them out. See what we can do. Two. Where's the other one? He's right here. Come on. Come on. There you go. Ah, there she goes. Awesome. Nothing came back empty, so that's a bonus. Here you go. Here we go. Look at the pretty colors on these guys. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Pretty orange and blue. Reminds me of Boise State right there. That's a female. So the difference about crabbing from here in South Carolina to Oregon is that like in Oregon, you can't keep the females. Here you can keep the females unless they have eggs. You can't keep them if they have eggs, but 
Look at that. Those colors are just so vibrant, so pretty. The Dungeness crab are a lot bigger and you get a lot more meat, but these crabs are a lot prettier, I think. I'll bet that's five right there. Oh yeah, that's six actually. No, let go of my net. Let, 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 let go. Let, no, no, give me my net back. Stop. Thank you. There's another one. Come here. Ugh. These guys are fast too. They're fast little boogers. I'll bet all these are keepers. Only having to be five inches from tip to tip. Ain't nothing. It's another six incher right there. Goes in the pot. That's six. Let go of my net. <laughs> Let's go, y'all. Let's go. Seven crabs for our first set of pots. You know what? Not too shabby at all. Not a massive haul, but it's seven more than I had yesterday. So we're going to eat us some crab today, and today's just getting started. We're not even close to low tide. I, it's, I don't even know what time it is. I think we're still like three and a half hours, four hours from low tide. Get our pots back in the water and uh, maybe do some hand line fishing as well. Check this out here, guys. <laughs> this is poor crab pot etiquette right here. Those pots are maybe 15 feet apart. <laughs> shame, 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 unless they're the same guy. fresh bait out here. I don't see any other traps around here, so I'm not fishing on top of anybody, which I kind of like. Fresh bait, fresh pot, fresh possibilities, I'm thinking. Right there, perfect. Awesome. Next pot set, let's go find another spot for the second one. All right, Micah getting ready to showcase his impeccable cast netting skills. Oh, always an adventure when the cast net comes out. But I got a little inlet here. I see a bunch of stuff skiddly dooting along the surface. Don't know what it is. It was okay cast. Okay. Oh, hey, we got some bait. Look at that. Oh, and we got shrimp. Oh, check this out, guys. We got some decent shrimp in there. Oh, look at this. First throw. Yeah. Now we're cooking. Check this out. Check this out. Look at this. Check this out. Look at that. We got some mullet. Phenomenal bait. And look at this. Got some decent sized shrimp too. That ain't bad at all. That's all going in the bucket. Or in the live well, I should say. Hey, I'll take some shrimp with my uh, crab. That's a decent size too. Not bad at all. Here we go, y'all. Got the cooler all hooked up, or the live well, I should say. I keep calling it. Well, it is technically a cooler. This was actually that rotten meat cooler that I found at my neighbor's house. If you guys want to check out that video where I transformed it from a rotten meat cooler into this awesome live well, check it out. There'll probably be a link to something like that. will pop up right up here. Check that video out, but there we go. Keep our catch alive. Let's get back down there. Yeah, that was a better throw. I gotta really like swing. I gotta like swing back and swing out. Oh, I see shrimp jumping along the surface. It's a good sign, it's a good sign. Oh yeah, oh, we loaded up. Oh, we got more bait, more shrimp. Oh yes. Here you go. More out, just stuck me. White shrimp, that's not shabby. That'll be bait and or food. Oh my heavens, we got something in there anyway. What do we, oh, we got a skate. <laughs> Check it out. 
a little skate. I wondered if we might catch one of these today. There we go. Ooh. I'm gonna put the weight on the tail. Grab like that. There you go. Toss them over. I don't trust. I don't trust myself around that spine. Oh my gosh! There's so many shrimp jumping over there. Hopefully, there's some big ones. All the babies get out. That yeah, looks like it. We have shrimp on the deck. Come over this way, everybody. You're a baby. You're a baby. You're a baby. You're a shell. There are a few in there. Keeps. Oh my goodness. Do you guys see that? It just flew out. Stay in there. What do we got? We got something in the bottom there. Well, we did. He just got out, I guess. Oh, big shrimp. Nice. More nice uh, shrimp. Oh, we got a crab. We got a blue crab. Oh, check that out. Oh, awesome. That's a keeper out there. Nice. I was like, I thought I thought I got something in there. Hey, get back. Get back here. <laughs> That's the bonus I was after. Uh, let's see. Let's grab this little net. Come here, you. I know that's a keeper. That's awesome. Bonus. You get in there. That's eight crabs now. Sweet. Along with all these little shrimp here. Now, the shrimp aren't jumbo. I'll give you that. But, shoot, it's a nice little tasty morsel. Get enough of them. We'll boil them up. There's a big one. There's another nice size one there. I'm periodically just changing this water out, keeping it fresh, but we're doing good now. This is awesome. Y'all, we might have to call a little early. Classic Southern weather, look at that. I'd like to think that's not coming for me. My phone still says, don't worry, it's not gonna rain until nine o'clock tonight, but I don't know. That looks like it says otherwise. We're gonna go and check our pots. We'll check them before we head on back. I don't wanna get caught out here. I've got a good probably 25 minute boat ride back. And if that starts to pour, um, it would not gonna be a good situation. Let's see if we got anything. I didn't on the first trap, pulled it up. Oh yeah, we do guys, we got a bunch of crabs in here. Holy cow, holy cow, we got a lot. Look at this, check this out. Oh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the best haul today. It looks like there are probably three, four keepers in there too. Look at that. Woohoo! We got some more crab. Got crab on the deck. There you go, first keeper. Nice one right there. He's got my pliers. <laughs> there you go. It's the second one out of seven. That's a keeper. Oh, look at that. That's a, that's a blue crab. Just kind of old looking though. Look at that. Kind of old and crusty. I guarantee you that's a keeper as well. the skin of our teeth. At least we didn't get caught like in the last video. I, I'd much rather get caught on a lake than out here in the ocean, that's for sure. Too many tides and, and sharks and weird stuff going on out here that uh, just makes me a little more nervous. So I get off the water and I find this. Somebody just totally ran into my trailer, bent the light, the light still works. But all this is just busted up and didn't leave a note, didn't leave anything. And people are stupid. Fortunately, I'll probably be able to hammer that back. 
and then well i probably won't even do that i'll probably just have to replace this thing right here man at least we caught a bunch of crab and shrimp today otherwise i'd be a lot madder than i already am that's ridiculous all right y'all back at our humble well not my humble abode <laughs> got the boat cleaned off and now we are ready to cook up some crab on our brio fire pit here we go what did we end the day with let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven of them not shabby could have gotten a lot more if the rain hadn't chased us all but we could have doubled that up at least I forgot matches, but I do have this little bit here. Hopefully. Oh, it works. That's good. That worry would have been helpful. You know, I haven't lit a fire in so long, actually. <laughs> it's so bloody hot out. I don't think about, you know, when it's 92 out to make a 500 degree fire, but here we go. I think we got a good light going on here. Ooh, that's looking good. Here we go. Got our water. I'm gonna go ahead and swing this over. Just like that, make sure it's tightened down. We'll set our pot right over the top. Y'all, this setup is pretty sweet, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I don't even have like the uh, grill grate or anything on. We're just straight up going for a boil, but there is definitely like no smoke. Once you get the fire going, because of all of the ventilation that it's got on here, uh, I mean, th there is, I mean, next to zero smoke coming out of this pit, which is obviously really nice. I know my neighbors appreciate that, um, but this is pretty cool. I'm really excited for this. So I've gone ahead and added some salt to the water. Got this Zatarans crawfish shrimp and crab boil bag. Just go ahead and drop that right in. Gonna add some lemon in the water as well. Going a little simpler. Typically, I like to use fresher stuff than this, but since we're kind of doing a little camping, this is what I had, so thought we'd roll with it. I'm gonna just take the lid off that parsley. I'm gonna add a bunch of it right in there like that. Boom. So back at the table, I'm going to mix up a little sauce here. I'm gonna start with almost a whole stick of butter. We're gonna add some lemon juice to this. I'm gonna throw down some parsley as well. Then we're gonna add some Old Bay right in here just like this and a lot of old bay a lot of old bay add some minced garlic as well add a little salt to this crack some in there now i'm going to set this off to the side i'm going to let this melt down All right, it is time to start dropping crab. Here we go. Water rolling. Two, last one. Check out these stone crab claws though. I mean, those are legit. They're big ones. I guess, I guess we'll just drop those in there too. I guess. Check it out. Got the fire going. Got our crabs in the pot. Oh yeah. It's been a minute since I've had crabs. I'm really excited for this. Oh, there's that seasoning packet. We've been stirring that in regularly, stirring it around, I should say, in the water. All right, y'all, these are about halfway done, but I'm going to fish a few out for a little extra something I wanna try here. Careful, they're still hot. What we're gonna do is now we're gonna take this sauce and we are going to paste it all over every crab. I got this recipe when I first smoked Dungeness crab on the Oregon coast. In fact, if you wanna see that video, there'll probably be a link that'll pop up in the corner. This time, we're gonna try fire roasting them instead of smoking them. Now, we're gonna take this twine, which I have been soaking in water, so it doesn't burn up over the fire. What we're gonna do is we're gonna suspend these crabs over the fire. There we go. And look at that. We've got a couple of crabs ready for the fire now. I'm just gonna add them, let's see, right about there. Just like that. Add them to our hanger. Let's swing these over. 
check it out, y'all. <laughs> we have crab roasting over an open fire. You've heard of chestnuts over the fire. We've got fresh crab boiling and now roasting. That looks pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. There you go, y'all. We've pulled the crab off. Now we're just letting it soak in those juices. We've still got our four roasting over the fire over there. Oh, good heavens. Now, we haven't forgot about our shrimp, though. What we're gonna do is we just got a little bag of them, probably about 20 of them or so. And I've still got some of that sauce that we put on our crab. Ooh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump these guys right in, just like that. Right into our pan there. Then we're gonna mix them around a little bit. There we go, got them all in that sauce that we put on our crab. Now we'll just go ahead and put these over the fire. And let's see, slide them right about there. And these don't need to cook long, just till they're pink, maybe about three minutes most. Oh, <laughs> y'all, look at this. Crabs, shrimp, got a Pepsi. Now it is time to remove our fire roasted crab. We'll just set him right there. Look at that, that looks awesome. That's pretty sweet. I'm excited to see how those taste. We'll just set them on top of the boiled ones. And then we have, for the last piece of the puzzle, a little lemon, butter, and garlic all melting down. We're just gonna pour that off right into there. Got a little dipping sauce set in there. We're ready to go. Oh my word, this looks absolutely amazing and I'm starving. Let's say a quick prayer before we get going. Let's tuck in here. That was awesome. That was awesome first day on the water. I want to start with some shrimp first. Can't cook the shrimp too long. Two to three minutes tops. Or else it gets too rubbery. Right in the butter. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so fresh. Doesn't get any fresher than that right there. They're not massive, but I mean, I get there's more meat here than there is in a crawdad, that's for sure. So I ain't complaining. That's so good. All right. I'm really itching to try one of these fire roasted crab here. The one thing I did forget to bring was something to um, crack the crabs open with. So I'm gonna just have to use my pliers here. There we go. Ooh, there's some meat right there. Actually, you know, I don't even dip that in butter because I am messing with like the, the um, with the shell and all the spice and stuff on the shell. It kind of automatically transfers to the meat while you're working it and that's delicious oh man that's really good that's really good definitely not as much meat in the blue crab but it's still good oh yeah look at that all that meat just came right out of that claw right there some people complain about like there's not much enough meat to make it worth it in blue crabs but then they'll go out and they'll shuck you know 150 crawfish at a boil there's probably as much meat in a blue crab in one blue crab as there is in probably 20 crawfish, so 15 crawfish, depending on the size you get. Oh guys, check out, there's a deer in the yard right across the street. It's actually a buck. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out, guys, right here. Well, you're looking at my fat face now. Check this out. This, guys, these are some subscribers I ran into. We got a deer across the street. Nice to meet y'all. Look at that, it's a big old buck. Right there, just walking around in town. Just chilling. Doesn't even care. I mean, look, uh, this is just the street. I mean, There's a street right here. We got people driving by in golf cart stuff. Just hanging out. That's all. That's pretty cool. That's so crazy to see, just like right out here in the middle of everybody. That's pretty sweet. Well, this is what I'm gonna be working on the rest of the evening. Getting the light repaired. Fortunately, there was an Ace Hardware on the island. So I picked this up. Should be pretty simple dimple to install, but I am not gonna bore you guys with that. You know, looking on the bright side, you know, it could have been my truck that got hit instead of just the aluminum trailer. So. A $25 light and you know 20 minutes worth of my time to fix it I guess it could have been worse 
Could have been better too, but it could have been worse. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me on the coast here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and the recipes. And as always, I will see you in the next one.